Flight has evolved at least four times that we know of, in insects, pterosaurs, birds, and bats, but quite understandably, never in ungulates, and especially not cows. Hello and welcome to, or welcome back to, Project Apollo, my series on a cattle seed world. Seed worlds are speculative evolution projects where a planet is seeded with Earth life, which is then left to evolve and diversify in this new context. On planet Apollo, these life forms were cattle, which, along with some plants and invertebrates, were left to fill every niche on the planet. In this episode, we'll be exploring the evolution of flight among these cattle. But first, right I'd like to remind you to smash that like button, ever. leave a comment, and consider subscribing. Forever. It's free, and you can always change your mind. I also asked the comments in the last video to name the two clades of tiny cattle mentioned. I'll be naming the small herbivore Mini Taurus, meaning, well, Mini Bull. As for the tiny Minophilus, I think Minovulpus, Vulpus meaning fox, would be appropriate. Anyway, thanks for all your awesome suggestions, and let's get back to the video. The evolution of flight is complex, and the fossil record doesn't give us much conclusive information. There are numerous theories for birds, bats, and pterosaurs, but a majority of scientists think they were arboreal, or lived in trees, which led to flight. The extinct bat, and I will definitely mispronounce this, Anicaniceteris feneri, had more claws than modern bats. This implied they climbed, although it's far from conclusive proof. Additionally, bats and pterosaurs have wings that connect to their legs, which could imply gliding ancestors. Although, this could just be a logical adaptation for animals with wings made from skin. In any case, perhaps flight on Apollo could begin in the trees. This would take a while to occur, since the only plants introduced to Apollo were tiny. But as cattle shrink and plants get bigger, some tiny cows would doubtless start living their lives in the trees. Perhaps some of these tiny insectivores begin leaping from tree to tree, to escape arboreal predators or catch insects midair. Developing a membrane between the front and back legs could aid in these jumps. Some cattle might start gliding from tree to tree in a method pretty standard for mammals, similar to colugos, sugar gliders, or flying squirrels. Their bodies would also likely start getting lighter, cutting out excess weight. Evolution might slowly shape these gliding membranes for flight, with longer, more controlled glides yielding more flying insect catches. If arboreal cattle can revert their hooves back into perhaps two separate toes, they might develop a membrane between the digits for a larger flying surface. But if bats and pterosaurs are anything to go by, they'd be more likely to use only one digit for flight, while the other toe becomes some sort of walking surface on the knuckle of the wing. All these adaptations could evolve into powered flight. Soon, catching insects midair would be easy, and these flying insectivores might be a common sight among the the forest canopy. There is some evidence to say pterosaurs stayed small until the appearance of birds. This competition then prompted pterosaurs to leave their insectivore niche and grow into sizes impossible for their feathery rivals. On Apollo, no such competition would exist, but this theory is far from proven. Due to the advantages flight provides, perhaps flying cattle expanded to new niches in more open habitats, growing bigger to fly farther. So far, Minophilus has been following its prey into most habitats, including some Minovulpus adapted for climbing, but the evolution of two flying clades in such a short time might not be likely. Perhaps some insectivorous flying cattle turned their appetites on their own, using their agility to catch other cattle midair. Many of these flying predators would probably leave the forest. They could soar over the prairies, hunting tiny cattle in a method similar to hawks hunting rabbits. To facilitate this, they develop long, broad wings for passive soaring and sharp eyes for spotting prey from long distances. This art includes horns, which may be possible considering many pterosaurs massive crests. But since the main reason for horns would be sexual selection, they might be large or only present on males. Many birds hunt fish, so some flying cattle would likely evolve to do the same, albeit with Apollo's crustaceans. They could divide into multiple groups, with smaller fishers that live above rivers, lakes, and the coasts of Apollo's many distinct oceans. These species might have to cross long stretches of land, so their wings couldn't be adapted for active soaring quite as much as the largest fishers. These flying cows would live above Apollo's largest oceans, like the Hyacinthus Sea. They could spend their lives almost entirely above and in the sea, with long wings dedicated to flying over water. We're not naming these guys yet, but hopefully I can go into more detail on them in a future Oceans episode. While there were likely many factors, pterosaurs might have grown so much larger than birds because of their method of takeoff. While bipedal birds' wings are dead weight on the ground, pterosaurs are quadrupedal, and could perhaps use their wings to launch themselves into the air. I personally can't imagine a pterosaur effectively taking off with its wings, but if it's true, then the quadrupedal cattle of Apollo might be able to grow much larger than birds. Perhaps after a few million years, albatross-sized cows would be a common sight hunting above Apollo's prairies, with some growing far larger. Thanks for watching! 
I thought about flying cows being descended from tiny cattle adapted to sprinting on their hind legs, like Jerboas or Scleromachlus, a terrestrial archosaur related to, although not necessarily the ancestor of, pterosaurs. But it might take time for this to occur, perhaps even more time than the evolution of trees and the subsequent evolution of climbers. Plus, there seems to be more of a consensus on arboreal origins of flight. By the end of this episode, the timeline's probably at at least five to seven million years into the seed world. I think the next episode's going to be on the many adaptations of medium-sized herbivores. Herding, swift gazelle-like forms, quills, perhaps even clubbed tails. I'd appreciate suggestions and ideas in the comments, along with any thoughts on the video. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.